And maybe I won't burp in that segment. That'll be great. Welcome to Just Trust Me, the marketing podcast that calls out the winning and wily ways of today's marketing. I'm your host, Rachel Moore, and as always, in the cahoots with my two fellow marketers and co-hosts, Elizabeth Allen. Happy days, friends. I hope it is. And Tanya Ballard-Brown. Hello, hello. You know what? I forgot to ask earlier, but what version are we on now yeah what season are we elizabeth are we still 16 okay we are still season 16 so we made it through a single week without me getting by a tiktok account well, you know i bet it's because everyone's distracted by all the shit that has happened in the space of one little week everybody i will say though given my behavior in the last few days. I, I, I'm not sure we're gonna make it. We will probably be talking about season 17 by the time we, we meet. Maybe that. they just can't get to you because there's so many keyboard warriors. Everyone in this room included. Oh, it's been a week. It I, has I been say, a week. So this is always the issue with me having to come up with another unique name for my <laughs> TikTok account, but wanting to use Yoko, which is like what I started with. And I've had some really cute ones over time, but I'm like, I'm on 16 now, bitches. Like <laughs> I am out of ideas. It's Molly Ring. So when I was, when I was redoing it, I was so mad and it was like late at night when I realized I got banned again. So it was like some bullshit, right? It was like, Yoko is sick of this shit. And it didn't even fit. It would be like, Yoko is sick of this shit. Like that's what it came out to. <laughs> and you have to wait seven days to rename it. So I renamed it to Yoko season 16. <laughs> Yay! And I, thought of her. <laughs> so I might just keep that up, you know? You and should. it's so funny though. I have so many friends on TikTok who always give me recommendations for the next time it should be. I'm like, cause we know there's going to be, there's going to be a next time. I know. But right well, now she's Yoko season 16. I like that. And yeah, it's, I don't do this anymore. So I'm not get, trying to give any of the, the hackers out there, the dark webs uh, away, but I used to do that with my passwords where I would literally just change the last number of the complex password. I don't do that anymore. Um, and don't do that. That's not that safe, but yeah. we've had talks with that about our, our little Slack friend group, how, how it's a miracle that I have not got my identity stolen because I am <laughs> not great with any of that. First of all, if you knew me, you could very easily guess the word mm -hmm. and then I just change it or I add like a, like a special character. And now I know Tanya of all people, she's always looking at me like, what are you talking about? Her <laughs> smile right now is kind of just like, listen, Linda, Linda, listen, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm so skeptical of all things all the time, but, um, I, I probably got seriously serious about it during my Neiman year when one of the Neiman's partners who worked for the administration at the time, well, maybe he didn't work for the particular administration at that time, but anyway, he worked with government folks, talked about the precautions and such that we would take. And I figured he was part of the deep state and he would know. <laughs> 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 So I was like, oh, I should listen to this. And so from that point on, and I say that even as someone who at work at my previous employer, they were pretty, like, you know, down. yeah, we have to, you know, use this thing for passwords and such, whatever. But in a specific corner of the room that I sat in, because we were the people who had the keys to like social media, and, you know, like things like that or for the organization. I mean, we should mm -hmm. all be safe, but they really, really wanted us to be <laughs> safe yeah. um, in particular for those accounts. And even with that, even after all of that, I'd be like, okay, I mean, I'm going to change a couple of different, because the thing about it would be remembering them all. That's the issue. Yep. Right. Yes, ma'am. And then I just got serious about it because he kind of scared. I mean, it felt like a come to Jesus because he kind of scared me. And I was yeah. like, okay. And so then I went through and spent the time because you know google will tell you this has already been compromised yeah. Yeah. yeah this you've used this one 55 times you know so i just spent the time one day and went through all of that and then added all the layers and securities and other kind of thing and i'm not challenging anyone to try to break through those barriers <laughs> no still <stay> away 
Please do not try to do that. But I, I do the best that I can with the little bit Tools of true given. Like yeah. part of me is proud of anybody who figures it out because my password is pretty much the same for everything I use. So kudos to you if you figured it out and typed it in. I feel like you should get it then. Like I'm proud of you. You gave me goosebumps just now in a bad way. <laughs> so I was like, no, no, no. I know. I, I am so bad. And then there's my mother-in-law who cracks me up. She's been retired. She retired like the month before my daughter was born. So she retired in 2013. But before that, she was in IT in banking. And we always joke around with her because her passwords are fucking nuts. Like, there's no way you could remember any of her passwords, right? Oh, so, like, you go to her house and she's changed her Wi-Fi password and you're fucked. You're like, I, I don't know what this is. And I remember one time uh, we were that. having this discussion. We still talk about it today. And we were talking about, like, okay, but your security questions, what do you answer with your security questions? And she goes, okay, so, like, if they ask you what your favorite color is, it depends on what the app is or what the website is. She's like, if it's a banking app, of course your answer would be green for money. And, and we're all like, how does your brain work, woman? Because we don't know. I really like, my favorite color is orange. <laughs> like, that's where I am. I like Oompa Loompas, therefore. She was like, no, because if I'm talking about banking, my favorite color should be green because it's money. And we still laugh about that today. But that's also why half the time when she's giving us passwords for things, I'm like, this is unfucking hinged. <laughs> it's unhinged the way she writes her passwords. This would be an optimal moment if any password manager platform out there would like to advertise on this podcast. And, and Bitwarden, I'm thinking of you because you're my fave. But anyway. Anyway, good opportunity. Yeah, it's the Wild West. And uh, to our varying degrees of security, we just say, you know, don't don't try it. <laughs> don't try it with us. And, you know, let's be secure. If you can work your magic on Elizabeth could, and make her actual, like, that's the thing. Like, advertise with us and see if you can break my spirit. I mean, that's what you do. What do when you advertise on podcasts, you let them try it. And then that's part of what we do. Mm -hmm. We talk about how it changed our lives. So Elizabeth's life needs to be changed, Bitwarden, <laughs> or 1Password, or whatever else is out there. Um, not last pass though. I'm turning you down. Sorry. I, I left you because you went okay. stupid on me. Um, all right. Well, now that I've just turned away one of one out of three potential. Well, let me wait while we're talking about safety things. Do you all back up your computers? Yeah. I'm a cloud girl. Like my downloads folder is the only folder that has anything really in it. And I clean that out routinely. So I'm a cloud, I'm a cloud freak. I don't use the cloud. I don't, I don't like the cloud. I do have an external hard drive. I don't use the cloud because I don't want to pay for I, This is where I go back to being cheap. I don't want to pay for that. <laughs> and it's mostly just pictures and some, you know, X records. All right, guys. So be frank with me. Is this whole mm -hmm. episode like an intervention no. for me about yes. security? No, no it's <laughs> not. No. After, after you called out the like, where is everything safe? No. Is it safe secondary? <laughs> I feel like I'm in the middle of an intervention and you're going to be like, Elizabeth, we have to read your letters. No, in fact, let's, let's take this opportunity. Now we are moving the focus yeah. off of trying to transform yeah. your life aside from the passwords <laughs> thing. Anyway, let's put something else in the focus of the discussion. Um, so here's what we are going to talk about today. Everyone listening, we are going to talk about some marketing thingies and I want to add a quick disclaimer. So one of our group, which would be Tanya Ballard Brown, uh, we, we've mentioned before, she works in journalism. So sometimes we bring up topics on this podcast and we have to bring them up because it is literally the thing that is being spoken about in many different tones uh, in the zeitgeist out there. There will be occasions such as today when our co-host Tanya Ballard Brown, the journalist extraordinaire, needs to bow out and remain quiet during the discussion. It's not that she ghosted us. She's actually not going to get another emergency pedicure during this next phase. Uh, that's not where she's going. She's literally sitting there waiting for us to finish talking about it so she can rejoin the discussion. And I like that we get to disclaim that because that's how you should do it. You are being the, the ultimate upper tier journalist that you are with 
with ethics and credentials and all the things that are good about journalism because you know as much as i know you'd want to be part of the discussion you are abstaining by virtue of what you do so tanya did you want to add anything to that or did i do it no but if i had known an emergency pedicure manicure was on the table <laughs> she would be like she'd leave it like a cartoon just have like that that cloud of dust leaving her behind in her chair that we're seeing on the screen but no but i look forward to hearing you guys chat about this <laughs> okay well your expressions we will just we'll just be watching those while we do um all right so just so you all know that's why you're about to hear just two of the three of us talk about this but uh we are going to talk about sticker mule and so you can google that right now so you can get a little teaser of what we're about to talk about uh we'll talk about that we're going to talk about good marketing question mark using brands bad choices and viral moments to market your own company uh this is actually a marketing tactic and everybody should know about it so we're going to talk about two instances with that one relating to a tiktok contractor and one relating back to the aforementioned sticker mule uh and then lastly we'll cover the we got got um we're going to talk about things that uh we as seasoned marketers and professionals do get got by and go spend our monies on uh, well, let's get started with this first segment, marketing thingies, sticker mule. All right. Um, first of all, Elizabeth, have you ever ordered from sticker mule? I have, but I wanted to know if you had. I have. My daughter is an artist and I remember when I first heard about them, I thought they had a great, I, I love their advertising campaign. I thought their prices were decent. And so I ordered a bunch of stickers of some of my daughter's work and thought the quality was great. I then mm -hmm. recommended them to my brother-in-law. My nephew does like battle bots. He does competitions with robots, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool. And so he had purchased stickers for the battle bot that actually my daughter had designed because again, she's an artist. And so not only had I used this company, but I had recommended them and was really happy with the product and with the service. This. I purchased from Sticker Meal in the last six months. I won't lie. Uh, I have my own business called But Wait, There's More. I have them sitting on my desk. I have purchased some stickers that have like QR codes and some of my just like little sizes. I thought they were super awesome. So uh, Sticker Mule has been in the discussion. Sticker Mule is a vendor that uh, you can buy stickers from and a lot of people have. As such, one would imagine they have marketing channels and they have social and they have email. Um, I'm going to postulate what probably happened early Monday morning. So uh, I am going to refer back to the shitty, oh my God, everything in one week shit show that went on last week, I'm referring specifically to the fact that there was an assassination attempt on the presidential candidate, also a convicted felon under indictment. He is a convicted felon. And yes, I'm going to say that doesn't change the fact getting shot at doesn't change that. So be mad. Uh, but he was the victim of an assassination attempt at one of his rallies. And there was loss of life there, not just of the shooter, but also of a, an attendee who was there. Uh, so Donald Trump was shot at over the weekend. That has obviously absorbed the entire everything. I even was interviewing someone today for something else. And I asked them a question, something about, is there something, a piece of media you've been looking at lately? And they're like, I'm going to skip that question this week. I was like, I respect that. <laughs> anyway, so here's what I imagine happened at Sticker Mule on Monday morning is that I think the CEO or and co-founder came in hot from the weekend of all the things that happened, had an all hands meeting and said, here's what we're going to do. Um, I have the tweet pulled up. So messages went out over Sticker Mule's social media, as well as their email, and they sent an email to customers. I'm going to read the tweet. We'll link to it in the show notes because it's still up. These folks be proud of this. Here is the tweet verbatim <clears throat> from the Sticker Mule account. Donald Trump was shot. I don't care what your political views are, but the hate for Trump and his supporters has gone too far. People are terrified to admit they support Trump. I've been scared myself. Americans shouldn't live in fear. I support Trump. Many at Sticker Mule do. Many at Sticker Mule also support Biden. The political hate needs to stop. Today, a bullet almost killed Donald Trump. He's got five kids, one still a teenager. No one should have to die and sacrifice the happiness of their family to run for office. If Donald Trump can risk that, the least the rest of us can do is vocalize our support and help end the hate. 
the more people realize that kind-hearted, compassionate people support Trump, the sooner the hate will end. I'm speaking up today and will do more in the future to stop this insane political hate. Awesome people all over the world love Trump. Don't limit your friendships and diminish your happiness by indulging in political hate. Vocalize your support. Stop the hate. Signed at the bottom, Anthony Constantino, uh, co-founder Sticker Mule. And there's a damn big picture of Trump right after blood's on his face, raising his hand, American flag perfectly positioned up behind him at the end of that tweet. But that tweet went out from the Sticker Mule account. Um, when did you hear about this yesterday, Elizabeth? So this was my experience with this. So I heard about it on TikTok, which is where I get all of my news nowadays. Um, so th somebody had posted a screenshot of this tweet on TikTok. And I was like, huh, immediately because I have used this company before, I was immediately concerned. Mm -hmm. So I went to the tweet. I, I always, I am definitive about this. Like I always make sure this tweet fucking exists. Yes. There's nothing I hate more than hearing this was happening. And like, you can't find it anywhere in this person's tweet stream. Right. So once I found out that the tweet existed, I told you about it. Cause I thought you would be interested. Mm -hmm. And we talked to tiny about it. And then literally five minutes later, I got this email. Yes. Hi, Elizabeth. Okay, first of all, the subject is tw Trump 2020. This is from Sticker Mule's email. From their email. And the subject, again, is Trump 2024. So it sounds like a, a, a campaign email. Hi, Elizabeth. Donald Trump was shot. I don't care what your political views are, but the hate for Trump and his supporters has gone too far. People are terrified to admit they support Trump. I've been scared myself. Americans shouldn't live in fear. I support Trump. Many at Sticker Mule do. Many at Sticker Mule also support Biden. This is calling back to the tweet mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, the political hate needs to stop. Hopefully this email helps. By the way, this week, get one shirt for $4, normally $19. I suggest buying one that shows you support Trump. The more people realize that millions of kind-hearted, compassionate people support Trump, the sooner the hate will end. Awesome people all over the world love Trump. Don't limit your friendships and diminish your happiness by indulging in political hate. Vocalize your support. Stop the hate. Anthony Constantino, co-founder, Sticker Mule. So the fact that like I was already so grossed out by the tweet I had just learned about and then in my own email box had gotten the same fucker saying the same shit. I was like, <laughs> baby. So I will tell you the very first thing I did was respond to the email because he sent it from a help. Mm. It was help at sticker. Mm. It wasn't like one of those bullshit, like no it's reply. not going anywhere. So I was like, I know it's going somewhere. So I responded to it and basically said, uh, by the way, I've used you in the past. Um, thank you very much for the reminder to unsubscribe from your emails. <laughs> like that, like, because I totally forgot that I was subscribed to their emails. I would not have remembered mm -hmm. that for a bit. But I will tell you that it's killing me because I mean, I use Gmail and within the last handful of days, I keep getting ads for Sticker yeah. Mule. And no matter how many times I say, no, I do not want ads from this company. No, I do not want ads from this company. I am still getting that. <sighs> But, you know, I basically told Tony Constantino there that I was like, no, um, thank you for reminding me that I forgot to unsubscribe your garbage. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I'll make sure that I never buy from you again. And I'll make sure nobody I know that I care about buys from you again. Yep. Um, and but yeah, it's killing me, though. And I know it's a weird like coding algorithm thing. Mm -hmm. But the fact that like I cannot escape yeah. from these fucking. Yeah sticker mule ads on gmail i'm like no matter how many times i say i am not interested in this i'm not interested in this since i started doing that i've gotten like six more of those ads and i know a lot of it probably is because they know like oh this is what's of interest right yeah now. so and let's let's talk a little bit more too so everyone listening to this too um it's obvious we've made no bones about it. I'm not necessarily an objective yeah. podcaster here, but it's my podcast. So guess oh. what? Um, just like he's doing, I get to do this for my podcast as my platform, but let me put a pin in that for a second. So there, there's so much here to unpack, but the reason I said, I have a feeling this all stemmed from 
Mr. Uh, Constantino rolling in hot Monday mornings, demanding probably to have an all hands, if not at least an all hands um, a marketing team meeting, declaring this is what we're doing today. Um, he obviously wrote or either he posted or had his team post a first person message from social and from email at least. I don't know where else it went out, but there you go. Um, he decided that this needs to be our message as a company, even though it's first person, it is, it didn't go out from his personal accounts. It went out from the brand accounts. Now he is the co-founder and CEO. He gets to do that. Um, he gets to tell his team what to do and to do that. So he does get to do that. These are all things in his power to do where we are drawing the question all <laughs> political leanings aside it's obvious which way at least elizabeth and i roll um this is there's so much wrong with this approach there's so much wrong we can tag team this a little bit here the first thing that i think is really wrong with this is um he mentions in his own message Many at Sticker Mule also support Biden. And I actually replied to the social, I don't expect to hear back from them, Sticker Mule, but I said, so where's the pro-Biden message? Is it because Biden didn't get shot at, thankfully? But um, what's the criteria here? Because he says at the top, I don't care what your political views are. I disagree. I think he has proved he does care what your political views are. And he turned uh -huh. his marketing team his marketing team and marketing channels into his own platform to say this is the way that this company believes because i believe it so i'll, I'll just stop there that's the first thing that i find a big problem with this so one of the things i thought was very interesting is learning that his marketing director has only been in the position for two months mm. two hmm. months and now he's in the position of having to protect this man. And now he tried, I, like, I will tell you, like this man tried to double down because you and I were talking about it yesterday. Can you imagine being on this marketing and PR team today? Right. Just like a fucking nightmare. You would wake up to a shit show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this marketing director, and I can't speak to anybody below him because a lot of times we know like the people who are higher up exec level are more likely to toe the party line yep. than the people who are like just trying to make a paycheck. So he's, you know, doubling down on the commentary from Anthony Constantino. Mm -hmm. He's agreeing with it, but he has only been in this position for two months. Yeah. And part of me is like, do you believe this? Do you agree with this? Or do you feel mm -hmm. like, because as somebody who has been unemployed since January, I'd be like, fuck, what do right. I do? You are putting your employees in a situation where they feel like they have no other option. Mm -hmm. They have to ride for something they do not agree mm -hmm. with. And again, for somebody who has been unemployed since fucking January, mm -hmm. I can understand how it'd be so easy to be like, I just have to repeat what you're saying. Yep because i i need a paycheck i have a mortgage i have a family um and so it's been really interesting to watch that which i hate when co-founders and ceos make these large declarations mm -hmm. and these people did not sign up for this a lot of these people regardless of where they fell if they're biden if they're trump if they're moderate like they probably didn't wake up that morning expecting that they would have to choose a side. Mm -hmm. And now to be able to feed their family, they essentially have to choose a side. Yes. Uh, agreed. Uh, that, and that's where it is. And okay. So everyone out there who is in marketing, you may or may not realize this, but you, and if you aren't familiar with it, so everybody on the marketing team is responsible for the messaging going out and then what they receive there's being on the receiving end. So just like, just like you replied to that email yesterday, you are one of how many people on their email list who probably did. And from what I can tell what people are sharing on social, everybody who disagreed with the tenor, the message of that email did reply to whatever yep. what response they felt. But, um, that all has to get fielded by people on the marketing team or customer care team or whatever. So, He's creating work there. Um, now, had he decided to go post this from his own social handles, 
the company would certainly have still felt some fallout from that. It, the team would have had to field comments because as people see that, let's say he tweets out from whatever his Twitter account is, um, but he's got in his bio, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Sticker Mule, and he's got the tag there. Well, then people are going to be, oh my God, and they'll go tweet out, they'll mention, they'll DM Sticker Mule's account, say, I'm quitting you, or I love you, you know, based on how they, their political leanings are. Um, they're going to interact with that, but not to the same degree as when this this comes out, he basically um, hijacked the brand accounts, made the brand voice his own. And as you said, it's such a power play. Um, he's got power already over these people. And like he said, some of them support Trump, some support Biden. There might be some third party people in there. People are like, I don't fucking care. Um, but in any case, he made it so that, well, the popular, the best way here, the way to my heart at this company is people who go, who cape for Trump. I, I don't exactly. know. I can't imagine. I can try to imagine how his Biden supporting or non-Trump supporting at least people at his company must feel. But you made a great point with the current job market, probably feeling pretty stuck. They, they can't mm -hmm. go anywhere. Um, I want to point out, too, because, you know, we we. We could probably talk about this for three hours. Let's be clear. Um, there, there's fallout. I don't know the data around the mon monetary fallout from this, but uh, the the hashtag and in threads is the topic. Kick the mule became yeah. the topic, and what I kind of loved about this. Obviously, I bought from Sticker Mule, but guess what? They are, they are like well, this first or second Google search result when I look for I need stickers, and so they show up. What has come out of the woodwork are tons of smaller, independent, family-owned, black-owned, woman-owned, uh, different independent, and even just vendors who are like, we just keep the politics out of it. We just sell stickers. Okay. Do you want stickers yeah. here? We're not going to get into the politics thing. Fair. Um, and they've come out of the woodwork because people are jumping ship. That's the whole point is that this move, uh, whether calculated or knee jerk, <laughs> um, has, has caused customers to jump ship. You are one. I am another. Um, we're two. Yeah. For and I will tell you also, I have a friend who has a very, very successful business in Provincetown, mm -hmm. very successful. And she informed me that she spends thousands of dollars with them Oof. every month. And she's a queer woman in a throuple. So she's like, uh, yeah, we won't be doing this anymore. Right. We're good. So the number of customers that they have alienated it remains to be seen like i think we're going to see this longer term mm -hmm. also honestly keep in mind the fact that i just recently learned after you and i were talking about this whole thing going down i learned that like they have a history of this which i would not have i didn't known. know that either yeah they have a history of that. There was one situation where where an indigenous creator had created a t-shirt about a lot of the women who are missing in the indigenous community yeah. because they just go missing and then nobody cares about them anymore. And the person had gotten a t-shirt, they had ordered this and they got a t-shirt response that said liberal moron. And maybe that was a mistake, but was it? Now we're like thinking, now, no. I'm not giving you the, the benefit of the doubt. No, right, it's right. gone. And which kills me, it, dr it drives me nuts where you see people who are like, they were already problematic. How did you not know? I'm like, cause I don't live on Twitter. I don't know how you want, like we can't see everything. Mm -hmm. We cannot see everything that's coming out in social media. Yeah. So apparently they have expressed some beliefs that do not align with mine yeah. that I did not know about. And I definitely placed orders after yeah. that. But it's like, you, you get to the point where you're like, how responsible am I for deep diving every single purchase decision I make, you know? Mm -hmm. So anecdotally, I know at least one person who's going to hit them hard and I'm only one. And you and I both probably know more of them, especially being in the industry. Mm -hmm there's going to be a ton of people where it's going to be like, this is not, this is not going to be like a one time, mm -hmm. like, 
oh, you know, we're not going to order from you at this point, And then we'll kind of forget about it. Like, I think this is a longer lasting yeah. issue that they're going to experience. Yeah. And look, let's be fair and honest about this. They're going to gain customers because of this. I oh, saw that. I that's know, that's out there too. And, and that's where I come back. And I've been thinking about this a lot over the last 48 hours, or I guess about 36 hours, whatever. Uh, it just happened yesterday. So it's like 24 hours. Um, but uh, I've been thinking about this a lot because it's like, well, you know, there are aspects to marketing where let's take a big swing. Uh, I, I definitely think we can call this that it's a big swing. Uh, you could, you can take risks. We've heard it, especially over the last several years, like brands need to take a stand. Um, especially in, in these United States where companies are people, corporations are people. Uh, so says the SCOTUS or, you know, Supreme Court of the United States, um, uh -huh. based on how you can do political campaign donations. Uh, but, uh, and we, I, I told you, I'll keep coming back to it. Um, you know, younger generations are voting according to values. Like, okay, you sell things. What else do you stand for? Um, so yeah. there is, I think, a proclivity for companies to say, well, let, let's come out with what we stand for. Guess what? Some companies are going to stand for the things you don't stand for, as is just evidenced by Sticker Mule. They do not stand for what I believe or think, but they stand for what some people think and believe. So guess you know, we have made that choice now accordingly. We're not going to spend our dollars there. We choose not to. Um, but the fact that you're seeing the ads, the fact that they've doubled down, um, I think they see this as a strategic marketing tactic, possibly a campaign that they're going to turn it into. Wouldn't surprise me if in like a quarter we see some kind of earnings like, ooh, let's put out, look how much we did, how well we did. And y'all losers thought we weren't going to. OK, um, maybe. But uh, it, it's a big risk. It's a big risk. <laughs> But the thing is, they're not the only name in the game. No, as, as we learned. And, and we have learned that. And I think that's one of the coolest things I've seen come out mm -hmm. of this is people sharing, like you said, queer owned, black owned, independent owned, yeah. sticker businesses that like people have used before and had a great experience with. I know, for example, I will tell you, I've heard great things about Sticker Ninja. Mm -hmm. I've heard great things about sticker app and actually I wrote sticker giant in our notes yes. today. And then literally before we started recording, my brother-in-law sent me the link to their website. Ah, his website. They were the ones I so saw like, first on the threads. Names are getting out there. Yeah. Right? He was the one I gave the recommendation for sticker mule. So I feel like responsible. Uh -huh. I mean, I shouldn't, but you know how you feel that way yeah. where you're like, I feel responsible. You spent your money with these idiots. So there are names out there and those are not even anywhere near all of the names of the companies that seem to have values more in line with ours mm -hmm. who have great products, great customer service. So go on Twitter, take a quick look and you will find people who are just like, randomly pushing out these these sticker companies because again sticker mule isn't the only name, name in the game you have to be really confident that you have the market share mm -hmm. and i don't think they do and i don't think they ever have and the thing about sticker mule is like yeah i like i said to you rachel you and i were talking like I knew they existed. They've existed for a long time, right? You said, I, I want to say you said 2015 was like the first time you really mm -hmm. came in contact with yeah. them. Um, but their name only really started coming up in the zeitgeist in the last like year and a half, two years. Yeah. So they were just now feeling the benefit of that. And they, they might've messed it up, but we have all of these other options and there are so many other options. Now I will say, uh, Uline also has very similar beliefs mm -hmm. to Sticker Mule. So that's the one thing I want to always, like, people are always like, Uline, because they're like the industry standard, right? If you feel how we feel, Uline might not be the company. Or it might be. Maybe I you're, I mean, if you're still listening and you're like, I am so polar opposite from what y'all are talking about, but you're still listening, great. I'm glad this was interesting. And, right. you know, go right. knock yourself out. Spend with your dollars. I mean, yeah. that. We've, we've talked about, I mean, that is, that is how people can choose and affect that data. It's like, well, use your dollars and make those decisions. Use your dollars. That's right. And in our show notes, we'll make sure we include some of these alternative yes. sticker companies in the show notes. So if you are in the market, there are so many other wonderful right. options that aren't sticker. Yeah. Mobile. They were not you, the only, they were not the only ones doing yeah. it. You, you can know? buy local, you can buy, you know, again, based on your values, That's which true. is what people tend to be shopping with nowadays. Well, we've kicked this mule to death. 
<laughs> Let's go to break and we'll be right back. Hey Google, how do I create a marketing brief? Hey Siri, how do I customize my LinkedIn profile link? Hey ChatGPT, how do I get better at marketing? The answer is always the same. Subscribe to the But Wait There's More YouTube channel. Get new videos every week to learn the fundamentals of great marketing from tools and operations to concepts and creativity. And never forget data. But Wait There's More on YouTube right now. And we're back and we can bring Tanya back into this next segment briefly, I think. And we'll see how much time we have too, because I know we've got two bullets uh, to talk about for the good questioning or good questioning, <laughs> good marketing. I have not drunk any alcohol today. I promise you. I thought about it and I didn't have time because I run down here because I was playing Baldur's Gate three earlier. Um, all right. I, this is going to be one uh, to ask the question, good marketing. Um, Elizabeth, I think you need to fill us in on the TikTok topic. What's going on? Yeah, so I wanted to have a bit of a discussion about when brands use other brands' bad choices hmm. and bad viral moments to create a market for their own company. And I think that's the coolest idea. Um, so most recently, I was on TikTok and I saw there was this viral video. Oh my God. So this guy got called in. So his company had installed a mailbox on this woman's house, right? So he installs a mailbox, whatever. And he comes back because she says, Hey, it's like impeding my view of my ring camera. Can you move it like a little over to the left, left or whatever? And the video of this dude where he loses his what? mind and he's basically like, how dare you call? First of all, he's like, how dare you call me after hours? She's like, I, I, I said, you guys could come tomorrow if you wanted. I don't know what you're talking about. How dare you call me after hours? And also you have called and complained about so many other things that my company has done. You complained about like somebody stealing a swing set or something. You complained about this. You complained about that. Turns out that he had the wrong house <gasps> and the wrong person's name. No. So he went on this fucking rage, like calling her fat. He finally takes a mailbox off the side of her house and like <gasps> flings it into her yard, like loses his mind, destroys his business. Right. Um, the funny part is, is that there is a construction company with the exact same name, but they're based in Canada. No. So of course they got a lot of shit yeah. out of it because this is the issue with like all of this is like so often people are, have no critical thinking skills to be like, yeah, no, they're not based in the same place. You just heard a name. And it was a very, I forget what the name was. It was a very basic name. Like you would hear it 3000 times for any construction company. And so this construction company in Canada did this great TikTok video where somebody was like, hey, I would like my mailbox relocated. And they're like, great, we're happy to do it for you. And then they did it. And then they had like a whole cute little video about it. These viral moments that these other companies have that is like might be the mm -hmm. end of their business. And companies using that as a yeah. way to gain notoriety and in the case like the one i'm talking about where it's like actually it could have really hurt their business and it did because people are right. fucking stupid like i i don't I, I don't know guys pay attention to what you're talking about like don't leave negative reviews kind of like what you did earlier where you went and made sure before you decided to go to go off yes exactly so like in these cases, I think this is the coolest way to handle it because it's it's very frustrating. And if I owned this business, I'd be real yeah. fucking angry. But I feel like the best way to handle that is to, to lean into it, mm -hmm. essentially, which is what these companies are doing. And I think that's good. Like, it I is good marketing. And I love that, that you brought the story up, too, because it brings up something that marketing teams need to A, do and B, be given the resources to do. Um, and Tanya, you can relate to this just from a journalistic standpoint as well, having your ear to the ground, you need to be listening. Obviously it's fine when stuff kind of filters its way to you. And what's likely to happen sometimes if you're a strong enough brand or you've got people connected, if either of you were to see something, Rachel, 
there's another brand out there called but wait there's more or there's another podcast called just trust me oh my god go look they totally fucked up um you know and i could be like oh let me oh let me go look um but brands the t marketing teams if they can be given the tools and the means to listen because then they can find these opportunities super fast because mm -hmm. what probably happened with the other one that wasn't the the culpable brand is they're like okay we need to put together how are we going to respond you know how can we do this and capitalize off the fact that we just got mistaken for this other company and that takes some time i mean you can do it quick but it's you know mm -hmm. making a video and all that stuff getting people to participate it and then launching that campaign takes time but um the listening part's key and it also one question i have too for smaller businesses and i'm just throwing out a name here i have no shade you know i'm not trying to get anybody hit with a stray but like pepsico for example you know they have crisis yes. management people on staff yes. right these smaller businesses have marketing staff maybe mm -hmm. have pr staff maybe maybe they have a pr slash marketing person maybe. <laughs> but a crisis man which is a a different kind of thing they may not have and this could have been a crisis mm -hmm. you know it really could have been it depending on the tone of the, of, I mean, honestly, I probably would not spend money with a business that I thought was screaming and hollering and going on um, at people right. that they were supposed to be, you know, like I'm, I spend my money and you want to yell at me. I don't think so. You know? <laughs> or at least don't throw the mailbox up against my house. <laughs> right. You know, excuse me or whatever. And you're right. People don't do the deep dive. So forever and ever and a day, this other company could have been known as the company that yelled at the lady and threw the mailbox, mm -hmm. right? But how often in, a, in, the, in the life cycle of a business does this kind of craziness happen? So they, did, they likely didn't have a crisis management person on staff. Mm -hmm. It took time mm -hmm. to come up with all of this. It was the right tone. It certainly sounds like they, they decided because they could have put out the, hey, we're not that company, you know, Yeah. press release, no one would have read right. it. <laughs> I'm the you idea know. that you're not doing the like, we're not them, you are showing us you're mm -hmm. not them. And I think mm -hmm. that's like the whole like, show, don't mm -hmm. tell type of thing, which exactly a group of writers here in this room right now, show, don't right. tell. Is a yeah. So to answer your question too, there are some things smaller teams can do. Um, but the first thing that comes to mind, Google alerts, that is free. I was just going to say it's free. Yeah. It's free to sign up. I have one set up, which is kind of silly. I have one set up for my name, which is just kind of ridiculous. If Rachel Moore, it's super common, but I also have one set up for my hand. It's not silly. I have, I, I always have one set up for my name too. I mean, I've had one set up for my name since you could have a Google alert. You want to hear right. my, I used to have a podcast called under the floorboards and I had a Google alert for it and I got all like crazy shit that was going on. Oh, in, like, the true crime. World. <laughs> yeah, it was it, like, and I still get it to this day. <laughs> and I was like, under the floorboards because it was Gilmore girls podcast. It was about like Lane Kim hiding all her life under the floorboards. And I constantly got emails that were like, Hey, Google alert somebody had some like body parts under the floorboard and i didn't realize until afterwards where i was like that was not not what i was looking for but i would say i would say out of like you know a hundred of the google alerts i got 99.9 percent .9 were about like somebody doing something fucking sinister <laughs> so that is a that is a good call out depending on the term or the phrase that you set the alert up for. I, I did find out there's a, a bodybuilder out there named Rachel Moore. So I, I do get a bunch of things that are not related to me at all, but I have on occasion caught stuff where I'm like, oh, yep, that's about me, but I knew about that or whatever. Um, so you can do that. You can do Google alerts. Um, if you have a social person, it's worth paying them. Do not just assume they're going to do this because a social media job is a very full-time job, but that is the person that's probably going to have their pulse on the zeitgeist on what's going on in the chatter and especially on the apps that you have channels on you can have them just do a routine search and also i would say google search your brand every like month or something and just see what comes up um 
you know, it, it takes time, but it, you have to have some kind of listening crisis management. The last thing you want to do is be surprised by something like this. And then no. it can negatively impact you get reactive rather than proactive. Um, I will say something, everybody should have a crisis communication plan, even if it's like a piece of paper and you're like, I'm going to do this in case something goes south or have a number for somebody you can reach out to. But, um, yeah, there, there's things you can do. People don't do it enough. I'm really glad to hear this brand. That's the way I would love to see a brand react where like, okay, like Tanya said, we'd either do the least path of resistance and just do something public relations -y, or we can meet the moment <laughs> on the yeah. same channel and, you know, capitalize on the fact that like, well, we ain't them, but we saw what happened. Ah. <laughs> but I think it's a great point. And that's exactly the thing. It doesn't have to be these poor companies who get like the stray bullets from the companies that they're related to. And all of a sudden that's when they mm -hmm. realize it. If you have a Google alert and you see a company with the same name, like do it immediately. That's yeah. hilarious. And I, like, I, I would love that. And I would think that was really smart. And you're also getting out ahead of any issues you might mm -hmm. have. Um, but you don't need to wait until it becomes a problem. For That's, your right. That's right. That's right. Well, is and the other thing is too, you can take advantage. Like if something good happens to a company, you know, like remember the time when there were all these Rashida Joneses, like there's the Rashida Jones who like runs MSNBC. There's Rashida Jones that's Quincy Jones's <laughs> daughter. Who's an actress. There's a, there was like another Rashida Jones and they were all like doing the, their own thing pointing at each other you can take advantage of it in that way too yeah so exactly exactly it takes a little collaboration you could be the ryan reynolds of your business <laughs> and you can even take some of the negative thing the whole thing about the four seasons landscaping <gasps> company that, that rudy giuliani had his press conference outside of and that company took that and they did and I'm so crazy. impressive like you're like no we are the company but also like we know this <laughs> crazy and so we're gonna we're gonna you know take it and just like go with it i thought that was like and they still are and every mm -hmm. time they post i am so impressed with them because it's like yeah why yeah. not you realize how ridiculous it looked you you found yourself in a situation that you were not expecting and like just take it and own it and move forward mm -hmm. with it and yeah there are some, certain situations where even if it is you and it is negative Move forward with it. Like that's well, awesome. Well, it just speaks to human nature. We flock as humans. We flock to the messy. We're like, oh my God, did you see what just happened? And then to like ride that out and be like, I mean, I always think about when an email goes out and it's run of the mill newsletter. Oh no, someone fucked up like a date or something. So then they send an oops out and the oops inevitably gets open more. Everybody's like, oh my God, did you mess up? Let me go, let me go read what you messed uh -huh. up. Um, and sometimes people, I, I've talked to email strategists, they're like, we do that on purpose. So we want people to open it. Do, do I know. Really? Yeah, they do it on purpose. Like, especially they're like, well, let's just shake shit up, which kind of chases back to the initial story um, in the first segment. But yeah, I mean. I'm going to tell you that this makes me feel better about all the times I've fucked up. You did it on purpose. No. You were being tactical. I was being tactical and strategic. Yep. I do. Yeah, Sometimes I'm right. like, no, I did that. I wanted to see who was looking. <laughs> I love it. Well, on that note, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with We Got Got. Did you know that most podcasts never get past dropping three episodes? Make your dream of brand building last through a consistent and compelling business podcast. I'm here to help. Reach out to Rachel Moore at www.butwaitthere'smore.com. Good things come in threes, but the best things and podcasts go into infinity and beyond. But wait, there's more, M O O R E.com. And we're back with We Got Got. Tanya, did you get got this last week? I got got today. We don't, that's, not even a week ago, honey. I got got today. I knew it was Prime Day. I have no need for anything. I had already looked a couple of days earlier. The the one thing I kind of thought, like, if there's a really good deal, I might get it, is I need a modem or router. Because, you know, I rent the one from the company and I want to stop that. And this will make no sense. I'm slightly too cheap to buy one, but I'll pay these people every month until infinity to rent theirs. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I know. 
hence why I'm going to buy my own. But I had already looked a couple of days earlier to see if they were planning to be on sale, the, the particular one I was looking for. And it wasn't, though another brand that had been recommended is, and I have one more day to think about it. Anyway, <laughs> I still went over there because you never know, you know what I'm saying, to look. And I realized that all my dog's foods and snacks and treats, uh, including something I bought her just yesterday at the local store that I go to that she loves and she thinks it's a playground. And sometimes we just go there to walk around the store. It's a local store. I love them. It's called um, the Big Bad Wolf. Oh, uh-huh. that's so cute. Oh, that's cute. All, so I had just gone there yesterday to buy her some food. It was all on sale today. I bought it. I will continue going to the Big Bad Wolf. I will continue patronizing them. I do like to uh, spend my money at their small businesses that uh, you know are doing good things for the community. That said, it was on sale. <laughs> <laughs> Those goddamn Prime Days, I tell you. Right. Ya. And I was like, ooh. And so I bought that and I bought some snacks. And then back when she was a little old puppy, she thought this natural kind of ute rug I had was outside oh, grass. No. And so she would use that. We were broken from that, but I threw the rug away <laughs> because there were no amount of spraying that stuff was going to fix this no. <laughs> with this rug because she just would not let it go. So I threw it out. But we're better now, even with last week. We are better now. <laughs> so the exact same rug, because the internet be knowing, y'all, surfaced for me and it was on a ridiculous deep cut sale, okay? I mean, like the rug normally costs like 200 and something odd dollars, almost $300, $80. I was like, bought, oh woo, bought, bought, I pressed the button so fast, I forgot that there were other things <laughs> since I'm spending money now <laughs> that I wanted to get. I went back again and bought me some, um, sponges and and some foam and bubbles for the toilet and you know some yeah trash the adulting bags. things <laughs> adulted yeah. i will tell you i've literally never bought anything from prime days i've never found anything i've ever wanted from any of the prime days and i know that people say now it's not as good mm. as it used to be back in the day and so i feel like i missed its heyday you know yeah Listen, I only started using Prime during the pandemic. Like before then, I didn't even understand why people were always talking about Prime or whatever. I was like, what is over there that I need? Because, you know, I'm a person that is like, I'll just go to this store and buy this. And then when I was trapped in my house for however many months when we couldn't go outside (laughs) to to get air (laughs) or anything else, I started using Prime. And I'll be honest, I don't even have my own Prime account. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to get my own Prime account. (laughs) I'm sharing a Prime account (laughs) with someone who shared it with me at the beginning of the pandemic. And I was like, oh, so stuff gets here fast. And, you know, oh, I can put things on auto. Yeah, I mean, and that's the only mm-hmm. thing I got to go back and figure out all my auto stuff and swap over Subscribe to Subscribe and to saves. Yeah. I'm trying to be an adult because I didn't, I didn't get that part. I, I like to say that I'm surprised that you don't have your Prime account, but I use your HBO Max. I, yeah, so. I, yeah, I use uh, <laughs> you know someone's Hulu. It's a community situation. <laughs> but I, you, you know, we share. Yeah, we share. 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 Every time I log into HBO Max, I think of. Um, quick, quick shout out to, did you know with Amazon prime that you get unlimited photo storage in the cloud? Oh, Not that you... so that's what you're about to tell me. I'll, uh, if, that's your gateway, if that's your gateway, you know, up to you, but I did move, I was paying Google drive, Google photos for like monthly. And then I was like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm already doing this over here on prime and I don't have to pay. So I moved it off, but it took some, it took some doing. I have a lot of photos. I have a lot of photos. I do too. And what's the matter of this dog, the intern? The intern. <laughs> well, she's a very cute intern. intern. Yeah, that helps <laughs> a lot. Elizabeth, what did you get got by? All right. So I will share this in the mm. notes, in the show notes. But okay. So as you know, I recently got a second cat, right? So we learned that for two cats, you should have three litter boxes. 
previously yeah. we had one litter box. That is a pain in the ass, <laughs> right? So now we have a litter box in our laundry room, which is where our litter box has always been. We have a litter box in our bedroom, which has become a problem because our new cat loves to use like a sandbox. So like <sighs> he just like spreads litter everywhere in our bedroom, which is lovely. <laughs> And then we have a litter box up here with me right now in our guest room. Um, and I realized I only had one scoop. Like it was a nice scoop. It was like a stainless steel <laughs> scoop. And I was, I was happy with it when we just had the one litter box, but now I'm like, I have to like travel with the scoop up and down the stairs and stuff. So I found the coolest thing on TikTok. TikTok shop got me. It is the very first time TikTok shop has Ooh. ever gotten me. Okay. So I want, I want that to be known. And it is a litter scoop where basically like you scoop it and it goes into like almost like a cup and there's like, you know, there's like a bag in it. So it goes into a cup. So you don't have to worry about like, scooping it and then scooping it nice into the bag, right like which is what i've always done it scoops it automatically into the cup with the bag and because i'm like i don't want to buy two more scoops i'm going to be real freaking annoyed about that you know what this is 43 this is what i'm excited mm -hmm. about <laughs> i love that Listen. i'm very excited about it i'm very excited cat owner here oh so i I've... thought you were gonna say that you got the 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 self-cleaning ones i'm all i'm fascinated no, by that dude i am too cheap for that i have a friend who has two cats and has all the cool shit for her cats she has the the self-cleaning litter thing she has the have you seen where they have like the rfid feeders where it goes by their microchip so it says like this cat should be fed at this oh time goodness. this much and this cat should be fed at this time and this much that's the other thing we're dealing with right now is because like the new cat is a boy and he's a hog and we were used to girl cats who are like, I eat whenever and it's fine. Like we used to have a cheap plastic gravity feeder and they would just kind of like eat whenever and it was fine. Now he would literally just like walk in there and eat every amount of food uh. he could possibly get until we move on. <laughs> so now we have to feed them separately. So I'm not there yet. I, I, I feel poor and broke where I'm like, I'm not buying the RFID feeder but it is very cool but my friend also has the hamster wheel like the treadmill for her cat like she nice. has everything i am not i'm not that i'm not either because first of all i'm unemployed I'm, I, so not a girl i feel that. you i'm not there either i'm like that scooper sounds amazing actually i might ask for the link to that the scooper yeah it was like eight bucks and it was eight i bucks. might ask for the link to that see like yeah, so I'm. I was very like sadly, and it was one of those things where I was like, "Ooh, that's interesting." That interesting. And then I waited a couple of days, and I'm like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna go crazy and hit purchase." <laughs> I love that you're like, "I'm gonna live wild, live dangerously." This again. This is 43. This is where I am. This at is this what age adults where do. I think that's wild. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So anyway, I'm very excited about it because it make it makes so much sense. Like just to like scoop and it goes right into it. And so you don't have to have a separate bag. It, it is definitely like with the two cats now, and they are very different personalities because the new cat's like a freaking dog, <laughs> He's like trying to get so used cute. to their different personalities and like how they live. Because our original cat we'd had for like 10 years on her own. And we're so used to all of her like mm -hmm. little, you know, like her little eccentricities. And now we're constantly fighting <laughs> like, what are what are you doing literally i will be sleeping in the middle of the night in that one litter box that's in my room i hear him just like <laughs> they does that on purpose it. and i'm like and all i keep thinking is like tomorrow i'm gonna have to clean up like four pounds of oh. and and i will say because i'm tr i'm a trash monster for the longest time like we've had our clean clothes in a, a basket over near where the cat litter was before the cat <laughs> litter was there and then we'd have like a separate dirty clothes like section and all of a sudden i'm like we can't have <laughs> the dirty cat litter all over our clothes so then i was forced to actually like fold my clothes and put them away oh i feel you there because i didn't want dirty cat litter all no, over that you know what this cat's really become a I... problem he's making <laughs> He's making me act like an adult. Uh, adult you're reminding like me it. I've got for four days now, I have a basket of clean clothes I've got to put away. Do I like? Mm -hmm. No, I, I hate doing that. Before this cat, it wasn't a problem. Like even if we left it there for months, it was fine. And like you would pick through the clean laundry and it was fine. <laughs> you That's how you would dress. And now he won't let us because he doesn't want to let us be great because he wants to play in the 
fucking yep. sandbox. He's oh like, this God. is my this is my life. This is my my area, my ecosystem. This is my life. Exactly. So anyway, the cool scooper thing, I'll put a link to it in the show notes, but I'm I am very excited about it. I might get it just because that might in, encourage other people in the house to clean the cat box and see like it's not so That's gross. That's a good point. Yeah. It like make it mm -hmm. easy, mm -hmm. just a one step thing instead of having to have the separate bag. Your shit smells, man. I'm not kidding. Um my, I'm talking about my cat. Anyone who's, yeah, he, he doesn't care. He's like, so when are you feeding me? Yeah, so I can shit more. Look at him. His look is like, he's like, yes. I, I can see his face right now. He's like, oh. ma'am, you shall do my bit. Oh, oh, it's not cute. He can't hear you either because of these, thank God, or he'd be like, yes. Because he's like, like he's totally, cute. yes. This is, hey, lady. Oh, this hey, is lady, what he does lady, in the morning, too. If lady. I don't wait, wake up fast enough for him, just kind of do this little boop. And then if I don't wake up after a while, a claw, a little tip of a claw comes out and starts going deep, deep. And I'm like, <laughs> he's like, let me test yeah. this. Test yeah. The waters. But I, I'll say two things. I'll, I'll say one thing before I say I, I did get God as well. I've forgotten. But um, we used to have like one of those little um, ours is in the laundry room and it's a concrete floor. And we used to have a little mat there, kind of like textured mat so that like as he comes out of the litter box, it kind of helps get all the, the, the litter pebbles off of his paws. Yeah, Except, so, yeah. I mean, it's a pl it's a flappy piece of plastic. So he would come out, and I know he fucking did this on purpose. I know you did this on purpose. I'm looking at you. <laughs> Middle of the night. Now, everybody know that she looked at my him. cat, and he's looking at me. <laughs> you totally did it. Um, Middle of the night. He shits, which by the way, smells. My husband's got a very cute sense of smell. So sometimes he just wake up because he smells it, which is terrible. But uh, right after he'd take a big shit, um, he'd come out, the cat I'm talking about now, uh, the cat would come out of the litter box <laughs> and we're dead asleep, right? And all of a sudden we start hearing this thwap, 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 thwap. He is clawing the edge of the plastic uh, mat. Aww. So it flax back onto the, like on the concrete really loud. And we got to fucking hate that sound. And it inevitably was in the middle of the night. He doesn't do that any. Also, we got rid of it. But because um, we're like, I ain't fucking doing this anymore. But uh, yeah, just in the middle of the night. And then, of, of course, I'm technically I'm the one who brought the cat into the family. So somehow at that moment, it's my cat. So it's I fault. get to go. Yeah. Oh, it's so stinks so bad. Can you go clean it? I'm like, oh, fuck you. Anyway, um, so but I did get got. I have discovered the world of uh, wireless bras. Oh, yes. Oh. Yes, Hunty. Yes, I should. Oh, tell us oh. more. I forgot I did get got on that back in June. That's okay. <laughs> because uh, so I needed, I, I need more bras, but I was like, you know, bras are fucking expensive. So I was at Target oh with my God. daughter and I'm like, let me go look. I finally need to get, I need to get some. I just need to get some. So I look around, you know, and, and you know, it's Target. And also the, the fitting rooms are still shut. Like they won't open back up. I'm like, so you kind of have to buy it and then like take it home. I actually have two bras I need to take back. Um, but I'm like, okay, so I buy like a two packer. I'm like, that's pretty cheap. And I'm like, what are these? So I go over and there's these like one. I'm like, oh, they don't have an underwire. Interesting. Like it's literally, it's almost like a tank top, like a tight little tank top, a cloth tank top. Well, not a cloth. It's like a blend polish or blend some kind of tank top. It's stretchy. It feels almost spandexy. Um, but they've got like the bra and they've got like the pads and the, you know, the boobs. Um, and so, uh, I was like, shit, I'll try that. So I found the size that was me. And then I needed a, a racer back style one. Cause I, I have some tops that I, that one, I had one bra that was racer back straps and it had just fallen to pieces. So I needed a new one of those same style where it's like got the straps, but it was no, no wire. These have changed my life. I like can wear these bras and I, I don't know about you, but at the end of a day of wearing, like I'm wearing a wire bra right now, later tonight, when I take it off, I'm going to feel like I've just released the Kraken. Cause it's like, it hurt. It's just like, oh, my skin can breathe. It's not like it's con So if any dudes are listening to this or people who don't need to wear bras, God bless you. But the wire, the underwire just is this constant pressure digging into your skin, literally fucking all day. And the bigger you are, yeah. the worse it is. And I'm like at the uh, 40C right now. But I have tried, oh my God, I feel like I'm wearing fucking pajamas with these new bras. And it's amazing. And like, and, and it is, it's like you, there's no, there's no hooks. You like literally just kind of, you know, get yourself into it like a tank top, almost like a sports bra. And it's so comfortable. Tanya, have you had the same experience? Because it's just gorgeous and awesome. Well, you know what happened years ago? 
I bought these two like pullover bras from Soma. Love them, love them, love them. They've never carried them again. I look every now and again just to see are they are my bras but I love I love mm-hmm. these bras. I love them. However, back at the beginning of June, I realized like, well, I, I think we've talked about or maybe well, we have talked about it. I'm not sure we've talked about it on this pod how I am kind of crazy and buy underwear and bras all the time. <laughs> I do. So I still have bras with tags on them. I'm going to wear those. However, <laughs> I was like, oh, I was I'm checking for that again. And they had these other two kind and it was some some deep sale. So I got four of these other kind, two of one kind and two of another. I'm I'm actually Googling the things now so I can show them to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. pretty and oh, so comfortable yeah. there's nothing poking yeah. me there's nothing squished in me yeah. there's nothing it's protection or whatever you know but there's no mm. poke or prod or feeling like you got a, a, a band across your chest yeah wow. yep i, love I feel the same and the worst part with a lot of those is because as women of a certain age, we are taught to like worry about our lymph nodes, yeah. right? So I always have the issue where if I have the the wire, which like I have right here, it pokes in and I and if I'm starting to have like soreness there, I start to mm-hmm. freak out that like I'm having something with yeah. my lymph nodes. It's breast cancer. It clearly is breast cancer. What's <laughs> wrong with me? Like it, it's just an extra yeah. mind fuck when in reality, then you realize like, oh, the end of the wire is hitting right where I'm yep. having that soreness. That's normal. But of course, because we're taught to fear the end of our lives of all time <laughs> when we're women, um, I can't tell you how many times I've been like, that's it. That's the end. <laughs> I'm having a lymph node there in my right lymph node. And it is always my right. And I think it might just be how I And like. bury me in this bra because like, it's the last yeah, thing yeah. I'll wear. And so, yeah, like I was just having it yesterday where like I had to remind myself again. I'm like, oh, it's sore right there. And I'm like, it's, that's it's it's right where wire. the end of the underwire. It's, yeah. It's I, I, my next thing I'm going to yeah. get got by, I, just, I was at Target earlier today because I needed to get a, an eyebrow pencil replacement. So I do have some tops that are more spaghetti straps or strapless and I got to tell you the strapless bra I have, I fucking hate it because it's wired. And that, that thing, that makes me feel like I'm in a torture chamber after about four hours because it's so mm-hmm. fucking tight because there's no straps on the top. So I am going to try out some of those ones. And y'all, I had a breast reduction like before I had my children. So I've never breastfed. My boobs are pretty perky still. Um, so <laughs> I don't deal with all the sagginess. So, um, they have those ones at Target that are really just like the stick-ons that, so they do the coverage over, I'm just to say it, the, the nipple. Yeah. Um, but they, so, you know, I'm not going to be poking out or anything like that, but um, I'm thinking about going and try those and just see how those do. They have ones that are independent and then uh, ones that's connected in the middle kind of. So um, I'm going to try them because it's like, I'm going to see if that works yeah. for the, the kind of stuff where I, I don't want to show a bra strap and that'll be what do I report back with probably. My only caveat for those is that they use sticky stuff mm. and the one time I did one I don't know if it's still there the sticky stuff like pulls some skin off no ow okay I'm a little nervous about that then I can't remember now but it was over here and I don't know if that was just because I was trying to you know carry too much luggage with the you've let your luggage since then <laughs> Yeah, I think the tab, the tab was like, <laughs> girl, no ma'am, but just keep that in okay, mind. Okay, we'll do. Okay. Lighten the luggage. So we all got got, and um, we'll have it in the show notes if anyone else wants to get got by the things we got got by, then have at it. Uh, but that is all the time we have for today on our way out. Uh, Elizabeth, where can people find and follow you online? Elizabeth Allen 1001 at LinkedIn. Excellent, excellent. And then Tanya Ballard Brown, where can people find and follow you? I am T double B on all of the things and all of the places. And the intern <laughs> is Butterbean Ballard Brown. Butterbean Ballard Brown on Instagram. And she had a little new content last week and then we ran out of juice. And y'all can find and follow me, Rachel Has the Mic, M I C, anywhere and everywhere. Also, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and threads at Just Trust Me Podcast, and anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. 
If you like this podcast, subscribe so you don't miss an episode. If you really liked it, leave us a review because that's good marketing anyway. We'll catch you on the next episode of Just Trust Me. Bye.